welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and today's car is this, the Honda Civic Type R Sports Line. Now, you can tell it's a Sports Line, not a regular Type R because it has a different spoiler at the back. It's slightly calmer than the Type R that we've got to know, which has a big hoop spoiler, 20 inch wheels, red stripes everywhere and that sort of thing. Well, due to sort of customer demand, some people don't like the full on look. They wanted a calmer, more European look, shall we say. They've come up with this sports line. And I thought this is a very good excuse to get this car in because I have not sampled this flavor of Honda Civic Type R. But after having living with the um, Toyota GR Yaris, I thought I really want to see what the Honda Civic Type R offers because the one thing that the GR Yaris doesn't really have is the practicality of the rear seats and four doors and things. Maybe Honda's offering, well, that will give you that because you can see it's four doors, there's space, it's a bigger car but it still has 320 horsepower from its turbocharged two litre engine and even more torque. So it's at 295 pound foot of torque and it's 100 kilos heavier against it. But anyway, that's why I wanted to get it in. So let's see what the Honda Civic Type R sports line is all about. Well, when you're discussing Honda Civic Type R this generation, you can't help but discuss design. And having lived with this car and knowing it's a sports line, the calmer version, I can't say I've, um, I like the looks of it. There are so many sort of faux pas, I think on the design front, I just can't understand what they're trying to do with it. It's such a big design. If I take the front, this is actually an aluminium bonnet, but then it's got this funny rubber seal here. So you always have this big gap. Why doesn't the bonnet go all the way down to where the color is here? And then you've got this bit of black here. It looks like a false vent here, which is my pet hate, but it's just a little lip. I don't know, but it sort of makes the sort of snake eyes of the headlights sort of bigger for no particular reason. So I don't understand what that's all about. And then there's a sort of false vent here for no good reason. This one vents into the wing. Down here is what's meant to look like carbon fibre, but is plastic. 50-50 on that one because it, it do, it's not a bad moulding and it, it'd be better than black, straight black plastic and it would be cheap to replace, but mm. not sure. It actually, there, there are some intakes that feed air to the brakes. That's good. Obviously, the rad is here as well. There's a funny little slit down here that sort of goes up into the engine, but come round the corner. Oh, dear me. Around here you see 19 inch wheel with good tires, Michelin Pilot Sport 4 S's, so just under cup two tires, that's good. But they all look a bit lost now, rather than 20 inch being 19 inch, they look a bit small in there as well. But they've lost the sort of, round here there's normally a little flash of red, as there was along here. And then it's got this little winglet here, but then, oh, now I start to get really upset because this looks like it's venting out the wheel arch, this big thing here with this wing extension, nothing of the sort. There, there we go, I've got this vent here. Well, that's completely blocked those. So there's only those two vents working there. Well, that doesn't go to the wheel arch. That sort of ends up in the, in the engine bay. So maybe a bit of engine heat comes out of there. Then it's got this sill extension, which is just a bit of plastic bolted on here, as you can see, just wiggles around. A funny flash that you used to see on the Ferrari 458, I think the first time I saw it, but it's just solid into it. And then there's this molding here, again, a sort of wheel art extension, pretend vent there that isn't a vent, the little 19 inch wheel in there. Oh. And then round the back, well, I don't know, false vents are something that really upset me. Though there, that grill there, completely false. Behind it is a blanking plate. It doesn't vent a thing, absolutely pointless. There's this rear, this rear diffuser does nothing. And then what are the three exhausts about? I looked underneath to see if there's any good reason to have three exhausts. Not that I can see, there's one pipe coming from the engine and then it branches into these two side ones and a middle one as well. All I can see, it sort of adds weight and complication. The rear spoiler, it looks as though it should do something. And then you open the boot lid and you notice it's almost tight against the glass here. If you look from the other side, it's sort of got this blanking plate. I can't believe this wing does anything but sort of add drag. Maybe an engineer can tell me differently, but it just doesn't look right. And then it's got these strange extensions on the roof completely pointless, just styling. These sort of things, I don't know, they're meant to deflect air, aren't they? That wouldn't do a thing, really. So there's lots of styling elements, this Type R, 
that you just scratch your head on and it's not authentic. I think that's the problem with all these vents and fussiness. That's a completely false vent there. I forgot to mention that one. I hate when the cars are covered in false vents. The thing I like about that GR Yaris, every vent, every bulge in the bodywork is there for a reason. It's the wider tract, it's feeding the intercooler, whatever. Not so on this Type R. Moving on to the positives, and there are a few. Big boot, really big boot. And uh, the first sort of cover that I can remember going that way rather than the other way. All works very well. Um, seats fold down, that sort of thing. So the practicality of the Civic Type R is strong. And I haven't mentioned the price of it. This one is um, £35,500 um, with this paint finish. It's solid metal, I think it's called, this paint. That was a 595 Exodus. But you do get four doors and a very black hole inside there, but lots of room in the rear seat. So a proper four-seater practical car but just with some very odd details on it. I might just show the engine as well. As I said before, aluminium bonnet. I had a magnet on it. I thought it was light. It's the only bit of aluminium I can find on it. Everything else is steel on this car. The sort of throwback to the, always had the red crackle finish on the Honda um, Type R engines. This is actually just a cover now rather than on the actual cam covers. Earth Dreams technology. <laughs> Honda saw descriptions, VTEC turbo. So turbo exhaust exits this side. Um, there's the turbo down there. And then this is actually the uh, intake to the um, inlet manifold the other side. Just one thing I thought on this engine, when you look at it, if you look at this engine, I'm quite surprised how it's actually quite a long way forward. There seems to be quite a big gap there. You'd think they'd put it tighter into the bulkhead, but I'm sure Honda have their reasons why it sits there. Anyway. Let's take it outside and take it for a drive. There's quite a few differences in here compared to a regular Type R on this sports line. I'm going to start it up actually once we press the clutch as well. There we are. Um, yeah, they've calmed it down basically. If I look at the, uh, what they say about it um, internally, the Alcantara steering wheel is carried over from the GT, teardrop gear knob, uh, 40 mil throw. I mean, it's such a signature of Type R, this manual gear change and this aluminium um, gear knob on tops. It's mega. Um, but the real difference um, is the seat fabrics. Yeah, I've this sort of black interior. It's still got the, the proper sports seats. You've got the sort of belt holes in it as well, Type R on it. They're bright red on a regular one, but not so in this sports line one. So they sort of calm down the interior as well. Black fabric is symbolic of the more reserved approach as they term it. Then, yeah, it's, it's normal Civic Fair here the screen which has got little buttons here i'm not going to press them because i quite like this screen but basically instead of having to touch screen when you're driving along at least you can sort of find these sort of 3d buttons with on on the screen it's quite a small screen i suppose you could say big plus i think on um sports line you've got wireless charging here for your mobile all connects up we're, I love this little plate as well, it's a Civic Type R and it's your chassis number here. So in years to come you'll be saying, oh I've got the last one produced or whatever because that's your chassis number right there. Yeah, I should just mention that this car rolled out of Swindon. This is made in the UK, this Civic Type R, and sadly production has just stopped and um, you, there will be no more new Type R's built up with this, this shape, unfortunately, in Swindon. So, I mean, yeah, real shame, that one. Uh, what else can I show you? In front of me is a, a semi-circle dash um, rev counter with speed in the middle and something saying I'm averaging 33.4 mpg, which is a bit good, really. I shouldn't be doing that well. 20 degrees outside, 1687 miles. Fuel gauge, I, I sort of struggled with how they worked, but there's a little yellow sort of dot, green dot, I suppose, actually, just tells you where the levels are. So a very easy to live with cabin. Um, great air conditioning. Yeah, nice place to be. And just this feeling of space from in here, so completely different to GR Yaris. Anyway, enough waffle. Do, do that. Um, let's get on, get out on some 
favourite roads. impressions are this is really quite civilized in here this is usable in a way that you don't expect and I've, I've used this little toggle down here and I've put it into comfort mode which is only comfort mode in type R land it's not comfort mode in your squishy well Range Rover or something but it does just calm things down and there's lots of insulation going on or something because it's, it's the road noise isn't transmitted in the same way as it is say in the GR Yaris okay noisy bit of road down there 74 decibels or somewhere around there GR Yaris is 78 ish on that sort of road um, similar to 911 or something like that so yeah lesson number one don't be fooled by the exterior look. This is a very livable car on a day-to-day -day basis. Comfy too, fantastic seats. Um, just you go, you fit in them. Um, they're warm because of the fabric when you get in, and they, you instantly think this is a nice place to be. There is no height adjustment on the uh, passenger side, unfortunately. There is here on the driver's side. Loads of space. You sort of get the touring car feel, adjustable steering column as well, and of course the Alcantara wheel as well. So it all feels good in here. I suppose the only criticism I have on the little toggle switch is you've only got the three modes. I've got R well, plus R, Sport and Comfort. It starts off in Sport. In fact, I'm just going to flick it back to Sport now. But you can't adjust individual um, elements of it. So it's got a quicker throttle action in Sport and the adaptive dampers go that slightly further. I'm just coming out of my little squirt up the hill. and. Gonna, I'm actually going to change down to second, which sort of feels too low. I'm at, I mean, at 30 miles an hour in second, I'm already at 3.2, and it just sounds a little noisy, but I want to use the gear change. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> and you get a little change ups there. Just, yeah, it's punchy this car. You do feel that 320 horsepower and that 400 newton meters of torque. 295 pound foot of torque. It it's, gets a proper move on, but it is fighting its front wheel drive. I was looking at a flashing traction control in there. It's got a locking diff on the front, but it's right at the edge of it. But uh, yeah, quick. I still can't get my head around that 169 mile an hour declared top speed in hot hatch. Land. That's fast, proper fast. What's quite nice is as you change down, there's a little flare of the revs, it does a little blip for you. That's all standard setting. You, I think you can turn it off if you go into the menu. But it's very well judged, so I quite like it actually. I'm in sport setting. There we go, I'm going to use the torque around here. Yeah, it's first. energy about the engine. I can remember sort of VTEC engines of old and, it, and this engine, even though it's turbochers, has a similar character, it's a slightly hard edge to it and it gets a proper move on. So it doesn't feel turboed in a way that you expect it to, which is good. This noise, you might hear it, I can hear it, it's sort of like on the disc and it's gone now stone in the disc type of noise but it's not there. I've checked, I've gone backwards and I just can't get rid of it. I'm just going off to the setting, this is the bumpy bit of road, put it into comfort and it is, it's good. You know, this is a horrible bit of tarmac. No, it can handle it. Adaptive dampers are expensive and but they are excellent if you've got a car with sort of dual rolls. I wish the GR Yaris had them in a way rather than the fixed dampers that it's got and that pretty firm 
ride that gets a bit annoying at times, as not so on this Civic Type R, um, you can play around with that and, and choose your ride and your mood and how you want to drive the car. Such a good engine, map. They've really worked wonders how well it works, and it fools you into thinking it's not turbocharged when it so obviously is. There's the compression, I'm in sport, so it would be a little bit of a great, great body control through there. That blip will have to heal and toe. Yeah, chassis dynamics are remarkable on this car. So it's one of those cars, you, you look at the outside and then you get in it and it's a different car completely. Right, it's probably time to summarize thoughts on this Tommy Parr Sportsline Civic. Well, dislikes first. You know what number one's gonna be? Just that exterior design. What were they thinking? I mean, it's just a mess. And um, even though they try to calm it down, this Sportsline model, it doesn't work at all. There's too much false vents nonsense going on all around. It just looks a mess. And I almost think, actually, that the true Type R looks better. Just lose that red pinstripe around the wheels and down the bottom. And I'll probably have one of those. Then... Yeah, it's right at the limit of what front-wheel drive can deliver, 320 horse and 300, sorry, 400 newton meters through the front wheels, but the locking diff does its best. But I have noticed torque steer through some of these tighter bends on this sort of surface, just about to hang on to the wheel. And there is a part of me thinks that adds character, so it's not the bad worst thing in the world, but you've got to be aware of it. And then some, some Times, I think, I wonder what this car would be like with DSG gearbox. This is the most wonderful manual, we'll come on to that. Can you imagine if you could have a DSG? It's such a revy, racy engine. What would it be like if you could just flip the fat paddles at the same time as well, turn it there, and up we go. Just listen to it. It's a real VTEC sort of sound. Weirdly, I think it actually suits a paddle shift gearbox. Let's go on to the likes. Well, where do you start? Performance. This is right at the top end of my expectation. Just the way it throws you down the road and the way the engine has some real character. I love that. It's an absolute star turn, this engine. I sort of wish it was in other cars as well as this Civic Type R. But it's easily the best bit about it. Well, the handling's pretty good as well. We'll come on to that. But around here, it's just... Not, I just love the way the diff just hooks up, charging now, I've got the torque steer coming out of there. Um, but yeah, I can imagine, I, I'm told on track this is a mega car and I can absolutely believe it from hoofing around on my favourite B roads. Um, this would be terrific on track, it just feels adjustable and it's got enough punch to make it quite exciting. of it. GL Yaris, great car, but it, it is lacking on sort of space inside and the discomfort and the rear seats that you can't use and that sort of thing. Um, not so here, you can basically have your cake and eat it. You've got the four doors, the practicality there, the big boot, but you've got this racy engine and this wonderful gear change and, it, and the great handling. So it's a really good combination of things. Price is pretty good as well. 35,000, got all the toys, all the aircon, dual control, wireless charging, um, LED lights, the list goes on and on. And if I was comparing this to the Golf R, which is just a more engaging drive, the steering's really good, it's got those really powerful brakes, the Brembo brakes, nothing wrong with those at all. So I really quite like the combination. 
information it's got, and I'd much rather be driving this than the Golf R. And I suppose the crowning glory to it is this gear change. It's such a lovely change. It just falls to hand. It's just such a short throw. You just play tunes on it. So it's one of the last bastions of a wonderful manual gearbox. So yeah, it's one of those cars that absolutely don't judge from the outside. Get in it, use it, and you'll have a ball with it. And, I, and it does, oh, it's such a shame if they'd got the design right. It'd been right there. It would have been taking on the Golf G GTI and it's, and it's UK built as well. So, you know, we really ought to be celebrating this car. Instead of that, we sort of look at it and go, oh dear, how have they come up with that? But in some markets, they love the looks. And I was talking to Honda and they actually pay a premium in um, the USA, if you've got a blue Type R on, on the deck now, dealers are actually charging a premium for it. It's just funny how some markets really go for this look. And it's also interesting that Honda have just released photographs of the new Civic, and it's much more European. And I think the chances of a Type R version of it coming are high. They've actually put off Euro 7 um, till 2027 now, so that means this engine can live on and I think the market's big enough in the States anyway they'll, they'll do a Type R for the States alone and Japan. So I've enjoyed my time with it. Would I buy one? Well no, I can't get on with the looks, I just can't, it just, it's not authentic, it's not to my taste but the driving uh, element is very much to my taste so I will watch this space and see what the, the 11th version of Civic Type R is like because that would be quite some car. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please keep watching, keep subscribing in great numbers as you already are and uh, there'll be some more videos coming on very soon.